All right. Welcome, everyone, to Monday Equals MC Squared. And today is November 8th. And yeah, it's still 2021. Last I checked. Um, man, <laughs> it's just crazy this last several weeks. Um, I think it's going to be pretty... Hmm, I, I'm just tired of using the word intense. But um, what Chris and I experienced over the weekend, and I love for you to chime in, is that it's kind of like out of this body experience, like out of body experience, out of this world kind of experience. We certainly felt like we were in between time zones, between 3D into 5D. I don't know if any of you are experiencing this, but it's like we felt like we went into the Allison, Allison in Wonderland. Is it Allison? Allison. Allison. <laughs> we call it Arisen. Shigina Kuni no Arisu is what we say in Japanese. So I don't know how to say that in English. So say it again, Chris. Alice in Wonderland. That's it. We call it Shigina Kuni no Arisu is what we say in Japanese. Okay. Anyway, so we felt kind of like that. Um, it's certainly recalibration again. I think this is like my third round of it this year. And it's, it's not like physically intense. Well, and I was physically intense too, but it was like mentally, I felt like I was being scrambled inside again, but in a way that was really, um, not scary to me. We were both looking at, looking at each other. And I said to Chris, I said, do you see us standing over there looking at us? Like future Chris and Masami were looking at us in that same room and saying, you have entered that, you have entered that tunnel. Um, that's what we were saying over the weekend. So it was really quite something. And I think we're going to feel that till the eclipse, the moon eclipse the lunar eclipse, um, I think, is it a 19th? I forget the exact date. Yeah, I think it's November 19th. But you're going to definitely feel recalibrations. So get plenty of sleep, which is a lot easier for us to do now, right, with the time changes. And even you live in a place without time changes, having darker, uh, turn darker early on, and it can stay darker in the morning, get a little more sleep. So in Japan, we say, Fall is the time to fall into early winter, but this is kind of the late fall is the time to catch up on your sleep. And then also we call it dokusho no aki. What that means is that this is a great time to pick up that book that you meant to read in the summertime and you never got around to it. So it's literally called the reading fall is for reading is what we were always taught. So this is a great time to pick up that book. Okay. So those are a couple of things I wanted to say about it. And um, Chris, let's do talk about a couple of things that we are keeping it up on our website that I, um, I talked to you about to talk about today. And then I'm going to pull up that email that I received about the lung retreat. That was really powerful. I received a um, permission to read this person's email. So I'll pull that up. So, Chris, are you going to take over or am I? Well, yeah, no, I, I was just um, grabbing this. I wanted to just mention a couple of things, um, announcements slash housekeeping. So we've been, uh, Masami's created a number of courses this year. And if you haven't had a chance to do them, several of them are still, uh, they have special offer pricing that is valid now through the end of the year. So if you haven't caught one of these and you would like to, please do take note of that. I'm going to put the link up for anyone who would like to check that because after the new year, we're going to be going back to what would be the, uh, the, the regular pricing. So please, if you want to do that, take advantage of the three courses. One of them was the Art of Embodied Boundary Practice that's currently available for 107. The Long Weekend Retreat, we're going to leave that available for those of you that weren't able to attend it live. And uh, we, we're not sure if we're going to keep that available after the end of this year uh, for just general access, um, unless you've already participated in it, then you can continue to access it. Um, but then there's also the 
uh, Breaking Through Weight Loss Resistance course. And these were very powerful presentations. All three of these were, were very powerful experiences. Many of you were participants there. Um, I can see from who's on today. And um, if you haven't had a chance to, like I said, the special pricing will end on December 31st. So that's one of the big announcements that I had. Oh, one other okay. thing. One other thing really quick is uh, I wanted to say thank you uh, on behalf of both of us for those of you that have been making donations. That is much appreciated. As you know, um, most of what Masami puts out there, like these Monday calls, is free. Many of these things are actually free. So we just mentioned a couple of the things that aren't, but all the summits, everything that she does takes up a lot of her time and um, energy to, to bring that material together. And um, so for those of you that have been supporting this program in particular, we're very appreciative. And um, you can find the donate link on our homepage which is masamikavi.com, and I will put that link up there also. And um, if you want to find it, it's just right under the replay for these Monday videos. And so again, thank you to everybody that has done that. It's just sort of completes the cycle of the energy exchange. So very much appreciated. Okay, that's all I've got. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, everyone for um, uh, donating and, and everything. And um, as you know, I spent a lot of time, whenever I get invited for a summit, I spent probably a little too much time, you know, because every time I do the summits or anything, you know, I'm always going to give you information that maybe you haven't heard and it's something you can use. And, you know, so I spent a lot, probably, like I said, way too much time for summits and so many you know, I just don't like recycle the information too much. So I hope uh, you can see that I, I put a lot of effort. So um, the best thing to really show that you appreciate what I do is to let the people know, whether it's like the Shift Network or other summits, let them know that you learned from me and you appreciate it so that they continue to invite me. That's the only way for them to keep inviting me. Otherwise, you know, if you don't, if they don't hear from you, then, then they just think, oh, well, maybe her interview wasn't that great. So they don't invite me. So that's the best way to show. And I get all the comments back at the end. So I love reading them. So I really appreciate those comments, the, you know, whatever stars that they, I don't know why they have to always do five stars, three stars, whatever, but whatever that may be, you know, please stay positive with it. Cause it, it's like all presenters are human beings too. And we need to hear from you. We get fueled. Like it's like a food for my soul and my spirit. So I appreciate that. And so I just wanted to quickly read this email. This was really powerful. Um, I really appreciate in you know, any time someone takes the time to say, this is what I'm learning, or this is what happened to me. And so I, I'm just going to read the entirety of this email. So she says, your talk was great. So this was the summit that I did on the lungs and the COVID energy and says, and you had new information. I always do, no matter what I um, present, because I, I like for you to stay connected to what I'm learning. And if I stop learning, then what's the point? You know, if I'm just recycling, like I said, I get stagnant. So, and then she continues to say, and your presentation highlighted how sweet you are and how generous and open you are in sharing your knowledge. Well, thank you. And then she said, I wanted to give you some feedback and tell you about an experience I had about a week or so after the amazing retreat. So she's talking about the lung retreat we did. First of all, my posture is better with my shoulders back and not hunched over. That's great. And my chest feels open and expansive and my lung capacity feels greater and I am breathing more deeply, which is a very good thing because I've always been a shallow breather. I felt totally wonderful for about a week. And then there were three days that my lungs were feeling really hollow and a bit painful. Then during this time in the middle of the night, I woke up and couldn't go back to sleep. 
And suddenly all the regrets of my entire life flooded through me and sent me into a fit of crying. I cried and cried. When I stopped and got up in the morning, never, never did go back to sleep. My lungs no longer ached or felt hollow. It truly seemed like I had been releasing old, old stuff from the middle and lower lobes. I'm hoping this will help me with my sugar cravings, especially for ice cream, which I could eat all day, every day. You're not alone. Okay. We love ice cream, but we buy the full fat in organic. Okay. And my tendency to hold onto things too long, hoarding. I love your work, Masami, and I'm so grateful for your gifting, uh, for your gifting us with your MC2 sessions and other events. All best. Thank you. So I wanted to read that because I think I get it. You know, the lungs are so big. It's the size of a half a tennis court, right? So you don't know where things are hidden. And as you begin to release and as you begin to somatically, so meaning you begin to change the shape of your postures and shape of how you've been showing up to this world, these old, old crystallized emotions can begin to break and begin to flow out of you. So this is just the beginning. And Chris will tell you that over the uh, on Sunday, actually, after we did some crazy running around with we danced around in our living room and we did the 80s day. So we were listening to Cure. We were listening to, uh, what is it? The other ones, um, Ice, Ice Box. I mean, I don't know some of those things you guys know. <laughs> Bunch of like literally 80s music. We didn't go for the punk music too much. We just did mostly kind of like jump around, you know, 16 candles kind of stuff. And literally we were like singing out loud. We had windows open because 75 degrees. And I think our neighbors were like walking by wondering what the heck was going on inside. But that helped so much for me to release. I looked at Chris and I just started bawling. And I just said to Chris, I said, oh my God, I've come a long way because I didn't know a lot of 80s music from this country. I moved here in the middle of 1988 and I remember some of these songs playing from the radio and I didn't understand. So I couldn't sing along, but I could hum along and brought up so much, so many memories of moving here by myself and, um, you know, just, just that loneliness I felt. So I just said to Chris, I said, man, I've come a long way. So Sometimes that's what helps you to build up your immune system. So I recommend you pick your era. I don't care what it is. Okay. I happen to love the 1920s music also. Um, so, you know, I just love cranking up music and just singing. And that is going to support your immune system and release some of these old, old emotions that you didn't even know you were still carrying. And I was really proud of who I, who I have become and how much I have survived and now thriving. So, you know, I wanted to share that as part of your immune protocol also. Okay. Chris, you want to add anything to the eighties music that we were dancing with and singing with? I, I would add that that's one of the two things that I mentioned before we started recording. I mentioned there were two things that I need to do because we're in a, this time where there's so much um, disequilibrium, that's kind of a technical word, but uh, imbalance and, and uh, just feeling disoriented. And so for me coming back into my body, it's funny because, you know, just this morning, uh, Masami's had to catch me because I drift and she can see it in my face. She'll be talking to me and she'll just be kind of like, hello, hello. And she'll see me drifting onto something else. And then she's like, okay, come on, we got to move. And then we'll start jumping around. I, I mean, it, it's like two kids on a playground and we'll be jumping around and we just start laughing. And I can tell you nothing works faster than that to get you back into your body than jumping around and laughing like a little kid. And so um, that's been very helpful because 
you know, I can, once I, once I do that, I have my focus back and I can get back into whatever tasks I need to do. But for me, this, uh, this weekend, um, of, of singing and all of that. It's this, this also goes back to some of the things we did in the, the long retreat that I actually talked about, which is to activate your center. I mean, you can call it your heart center. You can call it the lung center, which shares that heart chakra connection. And it's all about completing this cycle of energies. And your voice is a very powerful way to do that. So it was very healing for me too. Yeah. And we did listen to, we sang you two really loudly. Um, what else? I don't know the name. So you have to help me, Chris. Oh, I, I don't know if I'm going to remember all. Of no, aha. Uh -huh. We played the whole album of aha uh -huh too. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's anyway. Let's, let's anyway. Okay. So we topics for the day. <laughs> okay. We we're going to move on now. Okay. So Today, I'm excited to announce, drum roll, everyone. Okay, so in August, we talked about magnesium, zinc, iodine. We'll probably come back around to some of them too. Um, and last week was the need for protein in the digestion of the protein, right? If the protein is putrefying in your gut, that's toxic. So today, I want to go to this mineral because we're a huge fan of minerals. Minerals are talked about, but you know, a lot of times we kind of talk about more vitamin side and maybe other, other nutrients that are less of a mineral guys. And a lot of times we talk about the macro minerals, but I want to introduce to you to a micro minerals. And these are the small little guys. So the macro minerals are calcium, magnesium, sodium, and potassium and um, like phosphorus and things like that. Okay. But these, those are like kind of the big guys. Those are electrolytes, right? We need them because they're the majority of your main minerals. Okay. But these little guys, some of them are so powerful that they will act as if they're the big guys. Okay. And today's topic is selenium. Okay. Selenium is not something that I've talked about before, or if I've mentioned it, it would have been just like in passing because I didn't personally even realize how important selenium is. And I always knew that the selenium and things like zinc, and there are other ones too, that are considered to be spiritual minerals. Okay. Spiritual minerals. They tend to heighten or elevate your consciousness. And they work on the specifically like behind the third eye area to help the growth of your brain capacities, the consciousness to open you to a bigger realm. I kind of knew that, but I thought, oh, I'll just get selenium from food or, you know, nuts or something like that. I wasn't thinking too much, but then I realized that I was having continuous issues with liver, liver congestions. And so I was digging into why, you know, I'm doing taurine, I'm doing beet cultures, and I'm doing um, different kind of ways to support like herbs and milk thistles and things like dandelion roots and all these herbal things to support my liver. But I have a very, very stagnant liver and gallbladder function, which is something that I am working through it energetically, physically, and ancestrally. And I'm realizing that was kind of a missing piece for me. It was the ancestral piece. So that's something that I am slowly incorporating into my work. But the selenium has so much to do with the detoxifications of your body. But one of the main, uh, like the main things why I'm bringing up selenium is the selenium is so powerful for antiviral and during the flu season, especially. And because they're little, little minerals, you don't need to take huge amount, but they can be so powerful if you can take them, you know, even like every other day. And I'll give you the um, micrograms that the, you may want to look into if you're having viral expressions. And let's say if you're sick from viruses right now, you may want to up that. So I'll give you the dose towards the end. But like I said, it's a spiritual min mineral that's needed for the development of a certain, like a higher consciousness of who you are, but also as a brain activity as well. And what, what I found it interesting is that mother's milk 
actually has the high content of selenium, much more than a formula or like a cow's um, dairy-based milk. So isn't that interesting that the human milk has high level of selenium, okay? And I'm looking at some of my notes here, but the, uh, like I said, it's a, selenium is one of the trace elements, trace minerals, meaning the smaller guys that almost act like a macro minerals. And it gives you kind of this like a smooth, flexible, um, glorious bodies that like, and like energetically, psychologically also. So you've been feeling like a lot of negativity, irritability, like, like almost like, um, pokey feeling kind of like pokes, you know, like needles coming out of you kind of a feeling and you feel like you're jumpy and you even feel a little bit depressed. So like the energy is down, but then you feel like live wire kind of a feelings. You may want to look into taking a small amount of selenium also to support with that because selenium is a really kind of that silky, like I said, think of a animal kingdom will be gazelle or like a beautiful deer um, that it's like hops and jumps and just like, even like a giraffe, even, you know, if you watch them walk, like run in savannas and things, it's just glorious to look at. Think of that as selenium. Okay. And so if you get plenty of selenium, your, your feel kind of like a smooth sailing happiness, you'll feel soft, but flexible and kind of the silkiness. So if I would imagine it, it'll be like a corn husks kind of thing. You know, you touch it and it's like, it's smooth. We have these Japanese grass in our front Japanese garden that right at the beginning of the fall, like right now there, when you touch it, it's silky, but smooth, but flexible, but strong. Like you try to pull it and they don't come out very easily. That's kind of the selenium's job. Okay. And it's, it's so important for you to have to balance your mental capacity as well and your nervous system too. So if you feel crabby or unhappy, you know, definitely look into selenium. So it's one of those things that I had ignored for years. And most recently, it's really only been about last three months, everyone, that I started to just kind of slowly playing around with selenium because of my liver issues. Um, it's, I like it. I really like, I have a relationship with selenium. I don't take selenium every day though. It's one of those things that I check often with my body. And in the beginning, you might need to take every day, but I'm at the point that I, I don't like to take it every day. Okay. And it's important. And Chris will uh, chime in here as well, but, um, it's so important for protein synthesis also, um, so we talked about last week about how important the protein intake is, but to synthesize the protein so you can utilize the amino acids, you need to have selenium. And then there's a close connection with selenium with your thyroid and how the health of the thyroid is. So the, you know, the rate of hypothyroidism and Hashimoto's and other uh, like autoimmune conditions of the thyroid there's been a, a connection to the decrease of the intake of selenium because selenium used to be seen as toxic, which is totally not true now. People are saying, no, that is not the correct information. Selenium is not toxic. As, and the toxic rate begins if you've been, you are taking like 1000 micrograms every day for like three, four, six months every day then can get to the toxic level. So I'll just go ahead and give you um, the micrograms that you might want to aim for. So anywhere from like 200 to 400 micrograms every day is totally fine. Okay. And I am, you know, kind of down to 200 every other day kind of a place, but I, I was taking 200 to 400, but just to prevent um, if you have a smaller body, you can go from 100 to 200. Um, if you want to go up to about 400 for a while, three, four months, then then back down to 100 to 200 micrograms per day, that's totally fine. Okay. And Chris will talk about, you know, what kind of form of selenium that it's, it's very good for antiviral because different seleniums are great. Okay. But there are certain kinds that's great for antiviral. 
And, but if you're in acute state, okay, acute state of like, let's say you just got diagnosed with COVID. I just got a, um, an email and a, a phone call from one of my clients and her extended entire family. So it's actually like one, two, three, four, five, six of them um, got um, the COVID. So it's all extended family. So I just, you know, set up the supplements for them. And then um, we're, we're going to try to do what we can to minimize the impact from COVID. But um, if you are having the acute state, then you want to go for 600 to 800 micrograms per day for, you know, I would do at least about a month or so, but check in with yourself after about three weeks. Okay. But remember, it's not going to get to the toxic level, the study shows, to about 1,000 micrograms per day for extended period of time. That's like months and months, okay? So that's kind of a, where I wanted to start with. And maybe Chris can talk about what form. And I just, you know, um, before that, I'm sorry, I wanted to say a couple more things about the um, importance of selenium, that it's outside of antiviral and the flu stuff that the, we're talking about this month. It's actually really important for your coronary heart issues, disease, digestive inflammation issues, and then also heart disease, increased liver enzymes. So if you've been working with us or you've been working with your doctors about your increased liver enzymes, and no matter how much liver detox, how much you're not even drinking alcohol anymore, you're really removing all these things, then you've got to look at like deep seated infections, could be bacterial, viral, parasites, infections, mold, fungal infections, but also heavy metal infections. If you're having those hidden infections and liver uh, enzymes just don't go down, that means inflammation is high. Then you want to look into selenium. And I see, I just didn't look into selenium. So like I said, most recently for myself, okay. And other thing is the cataracts. Um, one of those things I hear a lot is like, oh my, my eyes, I got to get my surgery. Da, da, da. This is when we really do need to look into protein intake, digestion of protein, but possibly selenium. And selenium is very helpful for smooth, right? Smoothing yourself. So smooth skin, smooth hair, smooth nails. So it, they help with all the developments, all those things, skin, hair, and nail. And uh, provides elasticity. So if you feel like your tissue is getting saggy, you know, selenium alone isn't going to help you, right? The combination of protein, the digestion, the zinc, um, sleep movements, ox, you know, oxygen in your blood flow, that all those things matter, but the selenium might be a very important key for you. And it slows down the aging process. So who doesn't want to do that, right? We're all going to age, but can we slow down the aging? And why does it help with the slowing down of the aging is because it helps with the detoxification of your cells. And that's because it's selenium is directly connected to the production of glutathione. And that, you know, many of you know what glutathione is, but it's the master antioxidant, right? And it's necessary for your glutathione production. And in order to have that production, you have to have selenium. Okay. So you can't just be like, oh, I'm just going to take glutathione. Oh, you know what? You might want to look into why aren't you producing enough glutathione in you? Maybe it's selenium. And I, I keep saying, I'm going to pass it to Chris, but I'm going to, after this part, <laughs> he's shaking his head. Okay. Um, I'll just give you a couple food sources. Okay. Because I love getting selenium through food also. So garlic, onions. Okay. And I just read a really cool study that came out that the kimchi is now being studied for antiviral agents. Okay. Kimchis are basically the fermented cabbage, right? Not the cabbage, or you can make uh, kimchi out of daikon radishes. You can make it out of carrots. I mean, I lived in Seoul, Korea for a while. I studied Korean and I went to the university there for a little bit as well. And so I ate nothing but kimchi when I lived there and they love making kimchi. Uh, I mean, kimchi has to have garlic, right? Kimchi if doesn't have garlic in it. I'm sorry. That's not kimchi traditionally. 
But anyway, so garlic, really good. So um, fermented garlic. I don't know any of, um, I think there's some European nations that, you know, European countries that love eating fermented garlic. Go for it. Learn how to make them. Okay. Uh, get them. This is the great time of the year to get them and pickle them. Okay. Cooked vegetables. Cooked is the keyword here. Cooked vegetables give you a lot of good selenium that you can digest. Okay. And I talked a lot about the importance of cooking your vegetables on one of the courses that Chris told, told you guys about. It's the boundary class, my right? boundary course that I taught. Um, other things are, you know, less so, but um, like a nutritional yeast, brewer's yeast. I'm not a huge fan of those, just to be honest with you, because not everybody can handle those, but they can be. Brazilian nuts are great, you know, but they can be a little bit toxic to some people and you can't consume a huge amount and your body will let you know because the Brazilian nuts will start to taste like you're eating fungus, like mold. Okay. Um, so I know there are people that are talking about eat the Brazilian nuts. You're just going to get selenium through that. Mm, not so fast. Okay. I think there are much better ways to get uh, selenium than that. And also eggs, you can get selenium from, from mustard seeds, any kinds of mustard. So if you get mustards on your foods or mustard seeds, you grind, put it in, um, whatever you can use mustard for, I say go for it if you can handle it. And if you still eat liver and onion kind of foods, actually onions, garlic and liver combination would be a great way to get selenium as well, right? but you have to get the liver from a good source because the liver can be toxic. If you're just buying liver from local butcher shops that, you know, selling um, liver from a animal that it's not uh, cared, it wasn't cared for and was grass fed. So those are a couple of the things that I wanted to say, but I would recommend that you do actually this time of the year with the flu season and the viral issues, I would say, just supplement yourself a little bit, okay? It's a very cost-effective way. You don't need to get a huge uh, micrograms for this. Okay, so I will pass it to Chris finally. All right, everyone, I think we're done. Uh, <laughs> Sami touched on all the points really succinctly and uh, yeah, we're done. No, I'm, uh, I can add a <laughs> couple of, to that. <clears throat> okay. Um, there, yeah, so, I'm going to back up to a couple of other things that Masami already mentioned. So last week we talked about protein and how important that is, like she said. And so the proteins that are so critical that have to do with selenium have very much to do with, with energy function in our body, with immune function in our body. So a lot of the proteins actually work with selenium to make enzymes. And enzymes do everything from digest foods to signal cell functions. Enzymes are everywhere in our bodies. And in fact, one estimate that I read was that if, we, if the enzymes stopped functioning in our bodies at the same time, we would basically stop living instantaneously. That's how much enzymes are connected to us being alive. So that's one important part. And selenium is involved in a lot of enzyme production, but also for making, we've all heard this word a lot in the last year and a half or so, antibodies. So antibodies are protein based, and then they also rely on selenium for their antiviral qualities. And let's put it into context a little bit with what's going on, whether it's a flu virus, the COVID virus, whatever the viral factor might be, viruses infect our cells very much in similar ways. And one of the, the effects, and we maybe you've heard this term more than you care to, but it's the cytokine storm. The cytokine storm, that's when your body generates almost like um, a super inflammatory response all at once. It's this very aggressive inflammatory response. And sometimes it overwhelms the cells of the body and, and it actually does damage or even kills the body. It's so strong. And so selenium is one of the regulators that helps to keep that cytokine storm from going out of control. 
So it's very important also as a regulator. And like Masami mentioned, one of its main jobs is to help reduce inflammation by taking care of these things that we call um, oxidation or free radicals. Okay, so it's an antioxidant. So one of the things that uh, she, she was mentioning that I'm going to talk about here now is there are some different forms and I'm going to put this up on the uh, chat. Let me do that. Because this one's a tongue twister, selenomethionine. Okay, selenomethionine is a compounded form of selenium with the antioxidant. It's actually methionine is something that all of our cells produce and it's part of the energy cycle and it's part of the ways that, um, especially in the liver cells, this is part of the um, detoxification and anti-inflammatory process too. So the, the selenomethionine form is particularly powerful because it's able to cross the cell boundary, the cell membrane, much more easily than other forms. And what that means is it allows the cell to take it in and use it for its internal enzyme production and for its immune defenses for some of those things that I, I already talked about. So there, the, the, um, just the elemental form of selenium that you could get from food or from a, a, another kind of supplement, those, those will eventually find their way into the, the cells where, they need, where they're needed. But the, um, this selenomethionine is sort of a quicker entry and that's what makes it powerful. Um, and it particularly helps to stop viral replication. So again, flu season, seems like it's always COVID season right now, but it helps to slow down that and, and even stop the viral replication inside of the cell, which is very important to slow down infection and also uh, cut down on the severity of symptoms if you do have an infection. So maybe that's enough on well, just, and uh, yeah, and it's not just a COVID or flu, you know, issues, any but any, any, any viral, everyone. So, you know, it could be herpes, it could be HIV, it could be Epstein Barr, uh, CMV. Okay, so um, almost everybody's going to be exposed to EM, uh, the Epstein Barr. Okay, because I get a lot of people, clients that say, Oh, I talked to a medical medium, or I talked to them, you know, medical intuitive, and she or he told me that I have Epstein Barr. I'm like, Oh, my gosh, like that, that like, that's a cool information. Almost everyone's got it. So, you know, that does just kind of like irks me because I'm like, How's that helpful? You know, it's it's about working with your own virus that we all carry. We all carry. And it's like, how do we balance that? So the expressions of these things can be maintained. Okay, we're not here to eradicate these things. We're here to have a relationship with them that they don't end up taking over you. That's what we're doing. So if you, you know, talk to somebody and says, oh, I see that you have Epstein Barr and, you know, and you go, wow, this person was amazing. It's like, okay, 99% of us do. So what's the, what, is, what are the odds, right? So that's how I look at it. Okay. And, um, and another one that really, really bugs me is that when people say, oh, you know, some medical person, intuitive person told me that I, my adrenals are fatigued. I'm like, okay, whose adrenals are not fatigued? Okay everybody's adrenals are fatigued. Okay. So, but what do we do with it? That's, that's where I'm interested in. What are we supposed to do about that information? Okay. So I want to answer some questions, Claire. Um, yes, I was thinking about you because you did the hair tissue mineral analysis with me and I was actually looking at it, um, before I got on the call today, because I was like, I remember you had a really high selenium on it. So what happens is that in the beginning, we stop the selenium consumptions for a little bit or, you know, taking in, maybe we need to change the selenium that the, you've been using because it might not have been the right formula, like the ones that Chris just told you to take. Selenomethionine is the one that I would recommend that you begin to take. 
But what happens is that if it shows on the tissues, hair tissue mineral analysis, and it's high, that means you have bile unavailable level of selenium. And it's a good thing that you are detoxing that stuff out. So what happens is that when you begin to eat better, when you begin to digest protein, when you're starting to take care of your liver and so on and so forth, you begin to detox some of these called so-called bio unavailable minerals out of your system. And you can begin to, to take in the minerals that you can actually absorb. So your question was, okay, should I take one or two? My answer is yes, for sure. So let me see, is it once, twice, three? Okay, I get yes at three times a week for you, Claire. Um, 200, I get only yes at 200 micrograms three times per week. And is it with the food or without the food? You know what? Selenium, you're not going to have a, a queasiness from it or anything. So you can take it on the empty stomach. No big deal. On uh, selenomethionine form, you could just take it without food also. Okay. Um, and it's a small microgram. So it's a good thing that you, you don't even have to worry about the food. If you're going to take it with food, fine, but it's not that um, necessary. Like zinc, you know, you're, zinc and B vitamins, like things like that. I always ask you to take it with food, right? So, um, do I need to answer any other questions that have come in, Chris? Those are the main questions about selenium. And I okay. want to mention too, that, uh, there's a, there's a liquid form that's available. Oh, yeah. So if you're somebody who is sort of cringing at the idea of taking another tablet or sorry, it'd be a capsule in this case, um, you can also take a liquid form and those generally offer a pretty good potency. So just one drop would give you almost a hundred micrograms. So that's another thing to look for as you could just put it in your drinking water. So. Yeah, and uh, there's no known, you know, I like to always think about, okay, if we're taking supplements, how's that gonna interact with your medications? And there's, there are really no known drug interactions that you need to be, worried about, but obviously, right. You do need to, you know, if you're going to start implementing some of these things, please check with your physicians. Okay. About, um, adding selenium and things like that. And you can always start with a little bit of food, a little bit more added garlic in your foods or fermented garlic or cooking your veggies, you know, things like that to add it. Okay. Would, uh, we would have to know. say that because we're not doctors. So yeah, and I would add to that on that same note, that if you are looking at trying this out on your own, don't jump to the therapeutic doses, which would be a thousand micrograms. That, that would be something that you would want to do with somebody helping you through that process to help monitor and understand what's changing and what's happening. So I would recommend that you stay within more of a normal dose, which Masami's given you several examples in this call um, and start with that for a while. Like I'm talking weeks to months. I mean, it would be probably a good thing to give yourself two to three months to see if you can detect more subtle changes before trying to go through. And, you know, I, I, I think that there's this mindset that we often come across, which is, you may have heard me say this before, especially Americans have this mindset, which is that it's like money. If $1 is good, then $100 is 100 times better. And it doesn't work like that with our bodies and our health, and especially not with supplements. Because if it did, all we would, any of us would have to do is megadose on all of the basic things all the time and everything would be great. It doesn't work like that. It's a fine balance. And that balance changes from moment to moment, not just day to day. It's always changing. So if you overload on a mineral, you're going to throw other things out of balance, other minerals in particular. So there are ripple effects that will happen throughout your entire body, all of the systems of your body. So that's where you want to be very cautious about overdoing it. So that's, that's all I wanted to say on that point. Um, did you want to say something about cystic fibrosis and the selenium connections? Um, page 113. So, um, yeah, I think, I think with, uh, we, we read scientific journals, everyone. So we're, we're just, uh, making sure we touch upon exactly everything. What we were reading. 
Um, also, you know, support with the Crohn's disease as well with the selenium. So, so I think these three are important cystic fibrosis and Crohn's disease and thyroid. Um, while you're looking that up, um, I wanted to actually shout out, do a shout out to Diana, the, um, two Mondays ago it was October 18th. We wanted to hear back from you about your business, um, about working with the decorate, uh, not decorations. Um, what was it? Real estate and all that. And I wrote it down and I put the note upstairs. So I don't have it here with me, but I want to hear about your niche market. So if you're on this call, say hi on the chat. And if you're not, I'd love for you to come on next week to give us a pitch about your business um, and your niche market that you are trying to get to. Cause I didn't want to forget about you from two Mondays ago that I wanted to hear about it. So, okay. You want to talk about that? No, I, I think really quick. I don't think yeah, real estate. I, yes. I think, yeah. Yeah. I think that Diana was not on this call today. Okay. I don't see her name, but uh the, the, just the connection, I mean, with cystic fibrosis, Crohn's and thyroid is that all of those things, all of those imbalances require selenium to correct and reverse. So I, I think that that's maybe just the simplest way to look at it instead of trying to break down the, uh, you know, talking about the specific enzymes that are um, being produced by the body by taking that. But I th so I think the simple takeaway is that if you if you experience any of those conditions or know someone who does, and these are actually becoming more and more uh, commonplace as people experience chronic deficiencies in these minerals that are required to balance normal function in our bodies, um, that this is this is a real thing to look out for because selenium works with other nutrients like vitamin E and zinc that are part of regulating normal tissue function. So I don't want to make it too much more elaborate than that, I think, for today. Yeah, um, yeah, it is. And then I think it's, I was, you know, as I was digging deeper and deeper into selenium, because I was so interested in this, um, I, I just was surprised at how much this little micro mineral is helping your thyroid as well and how that's connected to how we are eating produces that are basically produced in the soil that is not rich with selenium. And we're eating produce that it's just subpar these days. So you can try to do this with just eating vegetables and garlic and onion, let's say. Um, but I would say you need to take some selenium supplements, you know, if you don't want to do it every day, you could do it every other day or something like that. But, um, Dakotas and like Midwest, they have a little bit more selenium in the soil, but also, you know, highly farmed soil is going to have other issues, right? Chemicals in there, uh, pesticides, spray, GMO crops nearby and so on and so forth. So I would say get the ones that are really high quality and we definitely use the biotics. I mean, hands down, this is my favorite. This is my favorite selenium. So, um, and Deja, I got, I say more than hundred micrograms. You said a hundred micrograms in my multivitamins, but no, you need more than that. I got you set too. I want to comment and, really quick. On and, uh, you know, Cheryl, I, it doesn't really matter how much you weigh. I just wouldn't go to the toxic level of 1000 micrograms per day. That's just, that's, that's scientifically proven that that can get to the toxic level. So I wouldn't do that. I would stay with the 600 to 800. You don't, you, you have to slowly build up in your body anyway. Supplements don't work like an overnight, like a medication. This is not medication. You have to build up slowly and different systems of the body are going to suck that selenium and use it. It's like maybe thyroid would be like, Hey, I'm first in line. Maybe your brain would say, no, I'm first in line. Or, you know, some tissues will say, oh, oh my God, I got to fix my tissues first. Or so, you know, it takes time for different organs and tissues and systems to um, get in line. So you want to slowly, slowly build. Okay. And then long-term idea here. Yeah. Go ahead, Chris. I was just going to say the question about multivitamins, uh, a lot of compounded multivitamins that depends on what you're taking. Um, this particular example, Deja is probably less of an issue to what I'm going to talk about here, but when they are complex together, 
a lot of times you don't get anywhere near the percentages that are listed on the label because one of them is the, the quality and the form of the vitamins and minerals that are being used in the complex. Selenium glycinate's probably going to be more likely to be taken into your body, but in many cases, a complex multivitamin is go or multi-mineral is going to, um, <laughs> a lot of the, the nutrients in there are going to go to support the absorption of the others. So they're called cofactors. So a lot of times that's what happens when you're taking a multi-complex is you're, you're getting some of what's in there, but not all of it, certainly not all of it. And that a lot of that just gets used to help facilitate the other ones getting into your body. And then I, I saw there's a, com, a question here too about um, thyroid, if your thyroid has been removed. Well, if you're if your thyroid has been removed, then you, you almost certainly have a doctor who has put you on a thyroid hormone and the thyroid hormone, there are a couple of different forms, but one of the most common is a T4 hormone and your body still has to convert that to T3 to make it active in order for it to use it. And that still is going to be something that having selenium as part of your resources in your body is going to help it to do at the cellular level. So, um, even if you don't have a thyroid, you still use thyroid hormones. So any other thoughts? I, I had a couple of things here that we had talked about that we didn't cover today that were just about the, the mindset and sort of that being in the world in a, in, in sort of a, a mental capsule, if, if you want to think of it that way, are you okay for me to talk about this stuff just in Close oh yeah. Here. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. Top of the hour. So we'll wrap up anyway, but yeah, we've had this ongoing conversation, but, um, just over the weekend, we were talking about this, this idea that it's very easy in the world that we live in today <clears throat> to find ourselves developing an understanding of the world that that's basically a mental model. It, it's really just a series of ideas that we've collected in it. And it's, it, it often stops short of the actual physical body. And so it's very easy. I know this from personal experience to find ourselves lost in the concepts and not allowing ourselves to feel and listen to what's happening physically in our bodies. It's almost as if our minds and, you know, when we say I, me, um, it's almost like we're talking about a being that doesn't belong to the body or that's somehow separated from what else is going on around us. And so I just, I wanna bring that uh, awareness back in as we're talking about this. And one of my favorite quotes comes from Alan Watts, uh, the, the stand-up philosopher, I think is how he referred to himself. Um, but he said that we have to remember that we don't come into this world, we come out of this world. Okay, we don't come into this world, we come out of this world. And that means we're made out of the same stuff, the same ingredients that are in this world and the same things that are affecting the world are affecting us physically, emotionally, psychologically, psychically. All of these things are at, at play. And so we need to, the, this is becoming a, a little bit philosophical here as we, we come to the end. But one of the things that to me is really powerful is this idea of staying with what is here, staying with whatever comes up. Because like we started, there's a lot of disorientation right now. There's a lot of this fracturing energy that's out there right now that's impacting us. And, and it, it's really when we're talking about things like compassion, or self-love or caring for ourselves and caring for others, the essence of that is staying with it. It's staying with whatever comes up and not turning away from it. And that's how we develop compassion and it hurts, it's prickly, okay? It's something that it makes us feel like uh, Chogyam Trungpa said, it's like having our skin turned inside out so that we're feeling everything the world is feeling. 
But that's kind of, that's where we are. That's the time in this world that we're in is that we have to stay with it. We have to stay with what our bodies are doing so that we can hear what their needs are. Okay, and that's, that's part of it. That's how you develop that compassion is don't turn away, don't judge, don't condemn, stay with it, become curious. That's what compassion really is. It's saying, tell me more of your story. I'm interested and I care enough to hear it. So we can do that for ourselves. And I, on, on a last thought from me, um, I'm going to do something that I, I want to make a final invitation to everyone for just a few seconds. And this is on the level of those of you that know uh, the work of, um, I'm just now forgetting her name, the power of eight. Somebody can probably help me with this. I just lost her name as soon as I was about to say it. It's the power of our collective energy to be able to focus toward a healing result. And I just want to say right at this very moment, Lynn McTaggart, thank you, Pauline and Linda. Um, I, I just want to invite you to do this for just a few seconds. Uh, someone who's close in my world is having a very, very difficult time right this moment. And I'd like you to extend um, whatever love you can offer whatever sense of being held you can offer and a sense that whatever it is, it's going to be okay. I want you to just please feel that and hold it and extend that to this person and I'll, I'll hold the space for him. Thank you. That was, that was a potent wave <clears throat> that you just sent. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. I know it's been weighing on you, so it's happening right this moment for him. So thank you for doing that for him as well and for Chris, because he is a very close, close person and Chris's life right now that's going through a really, really dark times right now. So um, with that, I don't have much more to say today, which is very rare. So take that as a good thing. <laughs> and I will have another uh, really interesting supplement to introduce you to next week. I'm, I'm really, really digging deeper for all of you so that you're not just getting the same old information about Take vitamin D. Yes, everyone. Vitamin C. Yes, everyone. Okay. Those are like, yes, yes, yes. Zinc. Yes. But I want you to learn these like little guys that are doing such a lovely work underneath it and supporting you all up to elevate who you are. So thank you for all your beauty and all your light. We so appreciate you. And there's definite changes going on 3D to 5D, everyone, okay? This is kind of the transitional time, I think. So let it ride. Don't try to figure it out. Don't be fearful. Okay, what was that last quote from the Dune? Says, I must not fear. Fear is the mind killer from the book Dune. So, and I think Chris wanted to add that one more thing to the fear quote, because you said one more thing. Then we'll end. Oh, my, my mind is empty. Um, okay, never mind. You just told me before we got on the call, but that's okay. No, it's, um, it, it comes after that. It says, fear is the little death. There's a, there's fear, a longer fear, quote to this thing. Fear is the little death. Yeah. So let's not fear, be excited, all right? But you don't need to do anything. You just let these, just do its job. You don't need to figure it out. Just show up, just breathe, okay? 
Thank you, everyone. We love you. See you next Monday.